Hey guys, real quick, I want to give a shout out to my friend Eric and his boss, Nico. They live in Dresden, Germany, and they are a part of a group called Dresden for Ukraine. Eric is a fellow bus nut, and after watching my videos, he's recently reached out to me. Eric and Nico have been working non-stop, organizing buses from Dresden, Germany, packing them full of food and supplies, and sending them to the Ukrainian border to bring Ukrainian refugees back to Dresden. Using their own time, money, and resources, they've been doing their part to help Ukrainian refugees to get to safety. The bus company they've chartered is called Putrich, and from what I'm seeing in these pictures that Eric has sent me, they look like they have a lot of cetras. I hope I pronounced Putrich correctly. Uh, if I haven't, Eric, call me out on that. Um, Eric has asked me to send a message to all the viewers out there to help them with resources to continue to fund the supplies, food, as well as the bus for his trips into Ukraine. Eric has given me the donation link in which I will put down in the description box below if any of you are interested in helping out. Eric, if you're watching, thank you and your team for your selflessness and hard work. I appreciate from the bottom of my heart uh, all that you're doing for Ukraine. Hey, what is going on all you bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there? Welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. With fossil fuel prices soaring all over the world, more and more people are turning to all electric vehicles. In the bus industry, this trend is also really catching traction. <laughs> Get it? Traction? Because, you know, buses and tires. And... That was not funny. Currently, all around the world, people are starting to see more and more all-electric buses replacing the diesel-powered ones that once dominated their streets. In the U.S., cities are being enticed with government grants and subsidizations, or in layman's terms, money. The government is giving cities lots and lots of money to buy these all-electric transit buses and getting rid of their old diesel fleets. Even in the small university town of Urbana and Champaign, Illinois, where I live, the once familiar howl of the new Flyer D-Series low floor buses are disappearing one by one and being replaced by hybrid and all-electric buses. But anyway, what about the motor coach side of things? Well, electric coaches do exist now in North America as well as other parts of the world. But in comparison to the city transit sector, as well as even the personal electric vehicle sector, the electric motor coach is just not catching on as quickly, at least not in North America. So today, we're gonna to take a look at the all electric side of the motor coach world, what electric coaches are available to coach buyers here in North America, as well as the benefits and drawbacks of owning an all electric motor coach. And finally, I will kind of touch on my thoughts of why all electric motor coaches are kind of struggling a bit compared to the city transit side of things. Today, if you're shopping for an all-electric motor coach in the North American market, there are several options available to you. Now guys, while doing research for this video, I realized there are tons of really in-depth technical specs on these all-electric coach buses, and I'm not really gonna go into too much of that in today's video. But if you are really interested and want to geek out, feel free to take a deeper dive into the tech specs as I will put all the sources I use to make today's video down in the description below. In today's video, I will however list and compare the two most important things for me as someone who manages and operates a fleet of motor coaches. The range, or how far a bus can travel under one charge, and the recharge time. I also wanted to compare the prices, but none of these manufacturers are listing any prices for these all-electric motor coaches. It's like they're afraid of letting us see how much they cost or something. You guys ever been to a restaurant where the menu items are so expensive that they don't list the prices next to them? Yeah. Don't tell me they don't use money in the 23rd century. Well, we don't. The first coach on the list is MCI's D45 CRT LE. Primarily used for commuter transit service in cities and not really used much in the motor coach industry just of yet, the all-electric MCI D45 CRT LE is a successor to the very successful line of the D model coaches. The first four all-electric MCI D45 CRT LEs were completed at the end of March 2019 and delivered to the Bow Valley Regional Transit of 
Alberta, Canada. According to MCI's website, the D45 CRT LE has a range of 170 miles and takes just under a three hour recharge time to fully recharge the batteries. The coach is also equipped with a 389 kilowatt hour battery pack. Another all electric coach from MCI is the J4500 Charge. The coach was originally known as the MCI J4500E prior to May of 2021. In May of 2018, MCI's first prototype of the J4500E completed its phase one testing and was able to operate at a sustained speed of 70 miles per hour. The prototype J4500E only had a maximum range of 200 miles and could be fully recharged in just under three hours. By spring of 2020, the finished coach entered into production and was renamed the MCI J4500 Charge. The production model had an increased range of 240 miles and could be fully recharged in just under four hours. The MCI J4500 Charge keeps four battery packs in the second luggage bay and four more in the engine compartment as well as one more behind the third luggage compartment with a 544 kilowatt hour battery pack. In February of 2022, Universal Coach Lines, a bus company out of Richmond, British Columbia, became the first motor coach company to place orders of the MCI J4500 Charge. First announced on October 9th, 2017, Van Hool has been performing extensive testing of their prototype all-electric CX45E. The CX45E made its first public appearance at the end of 2018 when it was released at the Bus World Bus Show in Europe. Now, according to Van Hool's website, they stated that the CX45E with a 676 kilowatt hour battery pack has a range of 310 miles under one charge with a recharge time of around five hours. Another all electric motor coach that Van Hool is currently testing is the Double Decker TDX 25E. According to Van Hool, in March of 2022, the TDX 25E all electric double decker coach made a 2,524 mile trip from Winter Garden, Florida to Costa Mesa, California using only public charging stations, proving the potential of all electric buses. The trip took over six days to complete. Now, the TDX 25E is a much larger coach being a double decker and is capable of carrying 69 passengers in comparison to the single decker all electric Van Hool CX 45E, which can only carry up to 57 passengers. Equipped with the same 676 kilowatt hour battery pack as the single decker CX 45E, the double decker TDX 25E was able to get 260 miles per charge with charging times averaging 3.5 hours. The key word here is averaging. Averaging 3.5 hours to fully charge the coach would mean up to five hours or as low as two hours. You see guys, that's the hard part of really slapping a charge time measurement for each model of bus. How long it takes to recharge an electric vehicle may not only depend on the make and model of the vehicle itself, it would also depend on the charging station used, the temperature outside during the charge, and also other weather conditions. So this is really hard to measure. But considering the CX45 single decker all electric Van Hool has the same 676 kilowatt hour battery pack as this double decker does, I think it's fair to say that around five hours is the recharge time for this bus. Van Hool, if you want to correct me on this and give me the actual uh, recharge time, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, I'd love to update people on anything that you guys have to say about your products. Development of the all-electric Tempsa TS45E began in 2019. A prototype of the coach appeared at the 2020 UMA Motor Coach Expo bus show. In 2022, Tempsa officially launched the TS45E along with its redesigned TS45 diesel-powered coach. Now, I was actually there and did a live coverage of this event, so if you guys wanna check that out, I'll put the link of that video up here and down in the description box below. The TS45E all-electric Temsa coach has a range of up to 250 miles with a battery capacity of 560 kilowatt hours. According to Temsa, the coach can be fully recharged in four hours. Now, BYD is a company that started out making batteries, but eventually went into car, truck, and bus production. According to a website, ChinaEmbassy.org, BYD entered into the U.S. bus market in 1999, but officially built a bus factory in Lancaster, California in 2013 with a production capacity of 
1,500 buses per year. In May of 2018, BYD introduced its all-electric 45-foot double-decker coach to the U.S. market, the BYD C10 MS. The first buses were delivered to a private employee commuter service for the company Genentech, which is a biotechnology company based in South San Francisco, California. Although classified as a motor coach, the BYD C10 MS doesn't really seem like it would be a good choice for use on the highway and more suited for inner city transit and shuttle use. Now I say this because according to BYD's website, the BYD C10 MS can hit 65 miles an hour. Now that's 104 kilometers an hour for those of you outside the US. So first of all, 65 miles an hour is actually a bit slow if you're gonna take it on some of the interstates here in the US. I mean, most US interstates have a speed limit of 70 miles per hour or 112 kilometers an hour. Second of all, look at the way BYD worded that sentence. Can hit 65 miles an hour. To me, that means that 65 miles an hour is not a maintainable speed for this coach for long durations of time. Now, the BYD C10 MS has a range of 230 miles with a 2.5 hour recharge rate and has a battery capacity of 446 kilowatt hours. That's actually a really fast uh, recharge rate for an electric coach. Now guys, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked by viewers whether or not Peoria Charter, the bus company that I work for, plan on purchasing all electric coaches. And the short answer to this is no. Not based on the current abilities of the all electric coaches that are currently available on the market here in North America. Peoria Charter currently offers at least six line run services every day to and from the Chicagoland area and the major airports. Now each of these routes are over 350 miles each day. This means that none of these all electric coach buses would come even close to getting the job done. We're not gonna make it, are we? And a three to four hour recharge in the middle of these routes would double the travel time for our passengers riding on our buses and make it so that one driver would not have the legal hours to do the trip. And all that aside, as far as the advertised ranges of all these electric buses goes, well, I mean, let's face it, those numbers are gonna be in ideal conditions. Same way as your miles per gallons are advertised on the car you bought. I mean, you're rarely gonna achieve the listed miles per gallon of your car, the same way these all electric buses will most likely rarely ever achieve the distance per charge in the hands of a bus company operating them in realistic conditions. I mean, if you think about it, battery capacity can drastically change depending on the temperature outside. Also, add on the weight of 56 passengers with a full bay of luggage. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the range per charge is gonna go down a little bit after all these passengers board. Also, another question is, is the driver turning on the AC system on these buses during the entire trip? Air conditioning systems are a huge drain on electricity. Just look at your electric bill when you leave your air conditioning on consistently. Also, let's not forget that on all electric vehicles, the battery capacity will decrease around two to 3% each year, which means that every year your bus is gonna get less and less range. Now for city transit buses that's doing circles around the city, range is not as big of a deal. Also considering some of them are able to recharge on recharging pads at each bus stop within minutes of each other. But for a motor coach that needs to get its passengers to their destinations 400 to 500 miles away within a 10 hour window, that doesn't really work. Bottom line is electric vehicle technology really hasn't caught up to the needs of the motor coach industry yet, in my opinion. At least not companies that run long distance trips for most of their services. Now, as a co-owner and manager of a fleet of buses that my employees and I all depend on for our paychecks, cost is gonna play a huge factor also. First of all, even though, as I mentioned earlier, the prices of these all electric motor coaches are not really advertised or listed, I did take the opportunity to ask the staff and sales reps at some of these trade shows I went to, and most of them gave me price ranges of around $1 million per coach. That's double the price of a diesel powered motor coach, which usually are around 500,000 per coach. I could buy two full size diesel motor coaches and make the profit of two charter trips for the price of one all electric motor coach. So as a passenger wanting to buy a ticket on my bus, that means that the cost of your ticket is gonna go up because the cost of your bus is now twice as expensive. Now you may argue, but James, you don't need to purchase any fuel anymore. Doesn't that make it a little more worthwhile? And that would be a great point and a good argument, but 
I'm not done listing all the costs yet of owning an all electric coach bus. All the money I just saved on fuel is now going into an entirely new set of garage equipment and tools that cost thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars per tool in order for me to maintain and keep all these electric coaches running. If you think I'm exaggerating on the prices of these shop tools and calibration devices, just look some up on the internet. Or better yet, go ask someone who works on trucks and buses. How much do shop tools cost? A lot. Brandon, how much do shop tools cost? A lot. And speaking of mechanics, all the diesel technicians that are certified to work in your garage and on your buses are now no longer certified to work on any of your electric buses. In order to work on and diagnose an all electric vehicle, one has to be certified. And when you own commercial vehicles and carry passengers, trying to have a non-certified technician work on your fleet could land you as an owner in jail and shut the doors on your company. Now, I did a search on Google about certifying an electric vehicle mechanic. According to a few different websites, 97% of active mechanics today are not suitably qualified to work on electric vehicles. So you would basically need to go back to school and get another full degree in order to be able to work on all these electric vehicles, which means if you were an owner, laying off your entire technician team and rehiring from scratch. Now, I'm not done yet. Let's talk about replacing batteries. The batteries will need to be replaced eventually. Electric car batteries cost around $20,000. I couldn't find what the cost of an all electric bus battery is, but based on how things trend, comparing the cost of car parts to bus parts, I'm gonna say that the bus battery is gonna be a lot more expensive than the all electric car battery. So with all that said, how are city transit agencies able to do this and most privately owned motor coach companies not? Well, one simple answer is the government. I mean, your tax dollars pay for most of the city transit agencies' purchases and upkeeps. Those organizations are not profit driven. Privately owned motor coach companies do not have the government body giving them money if their businesses are not making a profit. They simply go under, shut their doors, and all their employees lose their jobs. The other answer is when your fleet operates a predetermined route that can be pre-calculated and your buses are always close to your home base, you don't really need to worry as much about the logistics of only having a 300 mile range. Now, please understand that I'm not slamming or am I against all electric buses. In fact, I'm very hopeful that one day we will have an entire fleet of them. I mean, why wouldn't I want to never have to buy fuel again? But at its current stage, all electric motor coach technology is simply not far enough along for a company like Pure Charter, as well as many other motor coach companies here in North America to survive if they purchase them. As a business owner or manager, you would never want to purchase something that's gonna cost you more money than you would make back. Now, I might eat my words here in a few months if fuel prices keep climbing, because as I'm making this video right now, diesel's hovering about $5 a gallon, and it's still kind of going up. But like me, there are many other privately owned bus companies out there that are constantly trying to get a glance at what's just around the corner as far as evolution of all electric technology goes. With that said, there are motor coach companies out there that do have all electric coaches in their fleet, if not an entire fleet of them. And hey, it may work out for them. They may not have the long haul routes that require their buses to travel so far out. Some motor coach companies have contracts and trips that keep their fleet running local shuttles that do not extend past the range of the batteries. And more power to them for being one of the first companies to own, operate, and maintain these new species of motor coaches. And personally, I can't wait to one day be able to do the same. Now, if you or you know someone who owns an all electric motor coach or a fleet of them, please let me and all of us know down in the comments below what it's like. I mean, give us some insight on what to look for and what the benefits are, aside from the obvious, not having to purchase fuel. Well, folks, I hope you guys got a charge out of today's episode. <laughs> you see what I did there? Charge? Never mind. If you're watching this, then you are part of the motor coach world. <laughs>